Okay, so welcome back. Um, in this video, I'm going to cover some things that might help you in using LT Spice. Absolutely wonderful piece of software, though there are some things that, um, from a usability perspective, can be a bit of a challenge sometimes. So we're going to talk about some things that can help speed up your workflow, hopefully. Um, we're going to start out with a very simple circuit here. I've got a um, voltage source, which is a pulse generator just a square wave generator and it's feeding into a 100 ohm resistor and in order to set up this pulse generator you right click and you go into the settings and I've got it set as a pulse uh, initial starts at zero on is 170 volts uh, no delay it starts immediately at simulation I've got some one nanosecond rise and fall times and then you need to set um, the specifications for the pulses and the way you do it in LT Spice is you set an on time, and I've got 0.1 milliseconds, and a period, 0.2 milliseconds. And to, to get these, of course, you've got to do a little bit of math. The on time, you know, if you're going to have a 50% duty cycle, the on time is going to be 50% of the period time. Normally in doing electronics and electrical work, you think in terms of frequency and duty cycle. And this you've got to have on time and period. So um, that's okay. Um, and then I've run the simulation. I go to the simulate command and I've got a transient simulation and I've got the stop time set at 0.5 seconds or 500 milliseconds. So um, we've got the numbers. What we can do is we'll run this and see what it looks like. So I click on this and you get this mess, right? If you want to see actually what the waveform looks like, you got to left click and zoom in on this area. And, you know, let's pick maybe 10 cycles because normally you, you don't want to see all that mess. You might want to just see like 10 cycles or 20 cycles to see what the waveform looks like. So you zoom in and now you've got this. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some ways to make all of this a little bit easier. First of all, with this specification of the on time and the period, like I said, we prefer to work in terms, generally in terms of frequency and duty cycle. So what we'd like to do is we would like to input duty cycle and frequency and have the software somehow calculate the on time and the period for this waveform. Well, you can do that. And it's a very wonderful feature of LT Spice called the param setting, the dot param uh, directive. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to a Spice directive, and we're going to do a dot param, and we're going to assign a variable called duty. And we're going to set that equal 50. Okay, so now we have set a variable called duty and that's 50. It's set here at 50%. And let's do another one. Dot param freak equals, uh, in this case, we've got 5000 hertz. So we'll do another one to calculate the period from this frequency. And we'll do a dot param period equals 1 over freak. And then we'll do a t on dot param t on equals uh, the period times 0 0.01 times the duty. Okay, so it's taken the period in seconds and converted the 50% duty cycle into a 0.5 and multiplied that times the um, period. So now we've specified the period in the T on based on our input. So now we can go in here and we can change this. So 
instead of 0.1 for the T on, we will put in curly brackets for T on, and then for period, we'll do curly brackets. And now um, we can enter the, the duty cycle and the frequency here, and it will automatically calculate and fill it in here. So we have a, a bit of a user interface here. So we can, um, let's say we want to change the frequency to 500. So we just change it here. So now if we run this, we can see now it's changed it to a 500 hertz uh, frequency and it's automatically calculated the T on the period. So that's good. Um, now we can just have a little user interface. We enter the duty cycle and the frequency will automatically calculate the parameters. Now, the next problem is usually you don't want to see a whole lot of stuff like this. You, you generally just want to see, you know, maybe 10 cycles of the output. How do you make it so you can uh, automatically plot only specified time spans? Well, that's another thing you can do with the dot param. So um, when you run a simulate, here's a simulation command. As I mentioned, um, we're going to stop at 0.5 seconds or 500 milliseconds. And if you only want to view a small portion of this, and you know, you might want to run the entire thing because there might be transients in the beginning, um, but you don't really care about that. You just want to look at the, the end part, maybe at the 400 millisecond time, to see after it's settled out, what's the, what's the result. So what we can do is we can say, I only want to start saving data to be plotted at 0.4 seconds. And so I'm only going to be going, a, a plot is only going to go from 0.4 to 0.5 seconds. So I'll run that. And you can see that automatically um, gives us just the last 0.1 second from 0.4 to 0.5 seconds, which is nicer. But what we'd like to do is we'd like to automate that. We'd like to say, if you could somehow say, hey, we just want 10 cycles no matter what the frequency is, we just want 10 cycles of data. So how can we specify that? Well, what we can do is what we've got here. We could input the start time. So we pick what time we want the plot to start. And it will calculate the stop time based on, I only want 10 cycles. Whatever the frequency is, I just want 10 cycles of waveform starting at the start time, and it will calculate the stop time, which is 10 cycles after the start time. So now what I've added here is two parameters. One is start, and I'm going to start at 0.4 seconds. And the stop will be the start time plus 10 times the period. So we calculated the period here. So if it's 0.2 milliseconds, it'll be 10 times that, which will be 2 milliseconds. And that will automatically give us 10 cycles of waveform starting at 0.4 seconds. So great. Now what we have to do is go back to the simulate command. And stop time will be stop. And start time will be start. So now we can rerun this. And you can see we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So now all we have to do from now on is enter what duty cycle we want for the pulses, what's the frequency, and the start time. And it will automatically, no matter what the frequency is, it will give us 10 cycles. So for example, if I want, if I'm doing now 50 kilohertz, I will run it. And there you go. You've got 10 cycles at 50 kilohertz. You can see now we're 20, 200 microseconds for 10 cycles. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, plotting the values. And here I've got, um, I've changed my pulse um, source, and it's going to start out at a value of 8 volts, go up to 10 volts. So it's going to bounce around between 8 and 10 volts. Okay, and I've, I've done the simulation. You can see it auto scales it from 8 to 10 volts. So let's say I don't want that. Let's say I want it to go from 0 to 10 volts or 0 to 12 volts. So what we do is we kind of hover over with the mouse. We hover and you can see this uh, ruler. We right click and say we want it to go to 12 volts and 0 volts down at the bottom. So now we've got 0 to 12 volts. Fine. Now we'll run it again. Let's say we change some value. Let's run it again. Hey, wait a minute. It's back to 8 to 12, 8 to 10 volts. I don't want that. Is there some way to specify um, and to lock these values on the x-axis? Well, it would be nice if we could do another param and set that up in the um, in here. If we could enter a param in here and we could just enter it on the screen. In the schematic view, we could just enter the, the parameter of top and bottom. Um, I don't think that you can do that, but what you can do is you can save your settings. So, for example, let's change this back to I want it to go 12 volts top and 0 volts on the bottom. And the way I can save that for next time is plot. you first have to click on this window of the plot. Okay, make sure you do that. And then this plot settings um, drop down will come up and you can save your plot settings, okay? And if you do that, it will it'll ask you for a name and a location. You can save that. And once you've saved it, then what's going to happen if you rerun it, you can see, hey, you went back to 8 to 10. I told it not to. Well, what you also have to do is you need to click on the window. Make sure you click on the plot window. Plot settings. Reload plot settings. And there you go. It has saved the, the specification of 0 to 12, but you got to remember you got to reload it. So it's a bit of a pain. It would be much nicer if you could do a parameter that fixed it right here, but I don't know of a way to do that. If you know, please leave a comment. But otherwise, uh, you, just, you can just set up your plot settings. You can do the same on the vertical axis. You can set up your plot settings and just save them. Now, a couple more thing with uh, traces or plots. Uh, let's say here you want to measure the ripple. What's the peak-to-peak -peak ripple? Well, a quick way to do that is to left-click on the top part of the trace, right where I am, and then drag down to the bottom part of the ripple. And if you look down in the bottom left, you can see a dy equals 2.14 volts. That's telling you that the, the y delta in voltage is 2.14, which means there's 2.14 volts peak-to-peak -peak ripple. Now, if you let go here, you're going to zoom into that area, which you might not have wanted to do. So the way around that is to hit F9 to undo and zoom back out. Now, another thing you can do to measure your waveform is to control click on the, in this case, V voltage of node 001, control left click, and you can see it brings up a little window. Interval starts 0 seconds to 200 microseconds. That's the total display window. But the average is 9.001 volts. So it gives you the average of the trace um, throughout that um, time span and also gives you RMS. So good thing to know if you want to do some quick calcs on your uh, waveform. Now another very useful feature is if you go up to the um, the name of the plot here, VN001, and left click on it, you can see here it brings up a cursor uh, display. And if you go up here, you can see if I hover over this cursor, which is labeled 1, you can have multiple cursors. This is cursor 1. And if I move it, it will track the waveform. And if you look, it will tell us the value of the time and the value of the voltage in this case. And you can see here it's 65.78 microseconds and the value is 10 volts. And go down to the bottom and it's 8 volts and 10 volts and 8 volts. And you can 
get some very good measurements on your waveforms. And if you click it again, you will get a second cursor. And here's your second cursor. And it will give you differentials between these two cursors. So if you want a, um, here's your cursor one and your cursor two. And if you want to get a period measurement, you take the one and two and the difference between the cursors is down here, horizontal and vertical. And it gives you a lot of good information. It even gives you a frequency, 50 kilohertz, which is exactly what we've got it set for. So it's really useful to get a lot of good information from your traces. So now one thing to keep in mind with these cursors, it defaults to a very narrow cursor. And you can see here, kind of tough to find it. Um, so what you can do is you can go up to this hammer control panel and click on it and go to waveforms. And you can see the second item is cursor width. I like to set mine around three or maybe more than that. And you can see now, suddenly you can see the cursor. It's uh, a lot more visible. So, so now the last feature I want to mention is the ability to plot mathematical functions. So for example, if I right click on this um, trace name, I can add a um, mathematical expression to this trace. So if I want to multiply it times 10, I just hit times 10, OK. And now it's up to 100 volts and 80. And I can reload plot settings. And what happens is it goes back to the default plot settings. So keep in mind, if you want that to stick, you're going to have to save it in your plot settings. But it's really useful if you want to have like multiple traces. So if I had, um, say, current through this resistor on the right, and I've got voltage, and let's say I wanted um, to multiply VN001 times IR1, it will give me a plot of voltage times current through this resistor. And you can get really complex on this. You can get all kinds of great stuff. But um, just so you know, you can right click on this and enter whatever uh, equation you want. Now, one other thing you can do that might be helpful is you can plot a trace that is basically unrelated to any value in your circuit. Maybe you just want to plot a reference waveform and compare it to something. You can do that in LT Spice. There's a couple things you need to be aware of, though. Um, so let's say I want to plot just a sine wave, OK? So what I can do is I, again, click on the plot window, and the plot settings will come up. And then I can um, add a trace, all right? When I add a trace, I can select any of the values in the circuit, or I can just put in an expression. And let's say I want to plot a sine wave with a frequency of, say, 60 hertz. So I can say, plot the expression sine 2 times pi times 60 times time. And the nice thing is you can access the time values by specifying the variable time. And so we just typed in time. And it will pick each, for each point, it will pick the time and um, plot the sign. So here we go. So we've plotted something that's totally unrelated to the circuit. Um, and we're just using 2 pi f times time. Now, one thing to keep in mind is LT Spice defaults to not using radians. In this case, we did 2 pi times 60 times time. So it's assuming uh, you're using radians. This normally is unchecked. So normally it will use degrees. So you would just put in 60 times time. But if you want to use radians, you need to come into this waveforms, under the control panel, waveforms, and use radian measure. Click that, and it will. you can use the 2 pi times 60. 
So anyway, I hope that helps. Um, take care and have a really good day. Thanks.